This morning our scripture lesson is out of Genesis. Genesis chapter 12. I'll be reading verses 1 through 10. The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse, and all the peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham left, and the Lord, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions that they had accumulated and the people that they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for a land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Morah at Shechem. At the time, the Canaanites were in the land, and the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord, who had appeared to him. From there he went onward to the hills east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Then Abram set out and continued toward the Negev. Now there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down to Egypt to live there for a while because the famine was severe. This is the word of God for the people of God. Inventorying our backpacks. Last summer, for about two weeks, we talked about backpacks. And I'm really, I just got to tell you, I'm really excited about today. <laughs> I'm really excited about today because there is things that God added on to this teaching that, that I just absolutely love. And I just can't wait to share it, quite honestly. So um, that's kind of why I'm just like, I can't wait to get into this. Um, but two weeks, two, uh, two weeks last summer, we talked about the backpacks. And we talked about those from a standpoint of those are our life. And it is those things that the Lord gives us and things that we pick up along life that um, either are beneficial or not so much. They weigh us down. But um, I want to talk today about our journey. So sermon in a sentence. We are all on a journey. Now, I know that that may sound very, very simple, but sometimes it's the simple things that mean the most, and it helps us get back to some foundations. So today, we're going to talk about our journeys. We all have a journey. It doesn't matter to me who you are. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter if you are immobile or not. It, it doesn't matter. If you are breathing, you have a purpose. There is some thing that God has for you to further become, 
to further learn and to further do or be a part of. And you may think, well, you know, Ian, I, I know this person that the, they just sit at a nursing home and they just, they just sit there. One of the things that we often forget is that there are two sides to this world that we live in. There's a physical side and a spiritual side. And we discount, oftentimes, unfortunately, we can discount what people can do spiritually because they can't do physically. And that's not right at all. There are things that individuals can do, can engage from a prayer standpoint that will shape and change the world. I know many of us can put our hands up and give testimony that I am who I am today because my grandmother or my mother prayed me to where I'm at. So we can say there's power in prayer, but do we really believe that? So much so that we are counting on people who pray to be able to shift and change lives, our world, our sphere of influence, or our society. So if we're living and breathing, there is purpose. That's our journey. Our journeys change. They shift, they move, the territory, the terrain that we walk over, all of those things shift and change as we move forward. But we are all on a journey. Some may be super excited because they understand where they're going and they see where they're, where they're going. They know why God made them and they are just headlong straight into, man, I am doing this. Others' journey may be figuring out how much TV they can watch in a day. We all are on a journey, but what are we doing with it? And sometimes people just need to be encouraged and loved and shown that there is more to life than what they are experiencing. That they're not useless. But they have so much worth and so much value and so much purpose. They need to have chains broken off and they need to step into freedom. That's part of what we are to be doing as believers in making disciples. Is to come alongside individuals and to help them understand how God made them. Why God made them. And the gifts and the tools that they have. Scripture talks often about all different people. All these different people from... From Abram, who we talked about this morning, to David, who became king, to Jeremiah, who was born to be a prophet, that God clearly told him that he knew who he was before he was even formed in the womb. Esther, for such a time as this. Wow, boy, does that speak to today. But Esther, for such a time as this. The list goes on and on. John the Baptist was brought in to be a forerunner for who Jesus was. Mary was Jesus' mother. She had a purpose. Paul, a murderer, became an apostle. So you may be sitting there and go, well, you know, Ian, I made some decisions in my life that certainly put me on a journey, and it's not wherever I thought that I could be, or that I should be, or that who I should be. You see, Ian, I've made mistakes. And we all have. We have all made mistakes. We've all misstepped. We've all stepped off the path of the journey that God had us on, but he lovingly and, and, and graciously has pulled us back and can pull us back. Your last decision that you may have think wrecked your life hasn't. It hasn't. God knows who you are. He sees where you are. And the ultimate one who has the most power, can he not redirect your path? The answer is yes. Yes, he can. You see, when we're born, I'm going to use our backpack as an example. When we're born, we have these, we have these things that are given to us. 
Now, this is the part that God added in, which I absolutely just love. And I'm going to use this picture. Well, it's not a picture. It's a portrait, but it's blank. God has given us, each one of us, a picture of how he sees us. And right there, your gears may start grinding. But God sees you from the moment you were ever thought of in his heart to what he created you to be in the end. Many parents can look into the lives of their children and they can think and they can see pictures of of what that child can become. You see, I believe personally that that's a gift that God gives parents. Because if he's going to give that child to those parents, then he's also going to give them the tools that they need to train that child up in the way that they should go and who they should become. So see, there's times as parents we can get these pictures in our heads about what our kids are and what they can become and what they can accomplish. And we have all these hopes and these dreams and these, these desires that well up inside of us to help that child be everything that they can be. You see, God has a picture of you. Of who you are. Of what you are going to accomplish. How he sees you. Unfortunately, sometimes the breakdown is that we can't see what God sees. So we never can really step into belief or faith. Because we just don't see how could God see me that way. And some of us have no idea how God sees us. But you see, God has this portrait of who you are and who you are to become. And he sticks it in your backpack. Because he wants you to know how he sees you. On top of that portrait, he gives you this gift. This is your purpose. You see, the portrait is about who you are. It's about your being. Your purpose is about your doing. So for you to do all of what God wants you to do and and everything that he designed you and created you to accomplish, you have to have a good picture of how he sees you. Then, see, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but these are all my little gems. I have a little nugget of gold, diamonds, big gems, really neat stuff. All of these, these are your gifts, your talents. All your abilities that God gives you He puts them in your backpack. Because see, you've got a purpose. And he's painted you a portrait. And these are what you're needed. For all of this. To come into reality. To come into the physical. And so this is what you're handed when you're born. You're given these things. God custom builds your backpack. It's about you. Who you are. From the foundations of the world. He's been creating you. And he's been thinking about you. And he's been anticipating. The the day that you arrive on this earth. Because he can't wait to yet put another part of his creation on display. For everyone to see. So that they can see him through you. But this is what you've been given. This is your life. And you're handed this. With all of these magnificent things. In it. Just can imagine the joy on his face. When he hands these out. To all of us. And you may be like Ian. I'm telling you. 
man, I lost my backpack a long time ago. You know what? I've been there. I get it. I understand that times in life, distractions, some of my own choosing, and I'm sure some of yours, but distractions in our life get us off course. And so we take our backpack and and we set it down somewhere and we go off to do whatever it is that, that we're distracted by. And we're focused on this thing over here and we're just putting all of our time and our energy. And the crazy thing is too is that our talents and our gifts God lets us use over here. But I've lost sight of where my backpack is. And so there comes a point in time whether I'm reading in scripture or spending time or I'm walking down the street and God's like, where's your backpack? I got no clue. I got no clue. I have no idea where I set it down. I don't remember the last time I saw it. And I'm sure if I found it, it probably needs cleaned. Because it's been that long. But I've lost it. And there are times when it's just like, yeah, well, I lost it. And you move on and you go back to whatever you were doing. There's other times when it strikes your heart. And you think twice about it. And you wonder, where did I put that You know, I really could use purpose right now. Or I don't know who I've become in all of these choices that I've made. If I only had a portrait of how God sees me to get me back on track. I'm going to jump back into Genesis for a moment. There's an interesting part of this entire story here because we often know and understand, well, we often understand out of this story that Abram came, came out of the Ur of the Chaldees to go to Canaan. But that's not the case. I'm going to jump back a little bit in chapter 11. Let me read something. Terah took his son Abram and his grandson Lot, son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, and wife of his son Abram, and together they set out from Ur of the Chaldees to go to Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. Terah lived 205 years, and he died in Haran. Chapter 12. The Lord said to Abraham, Leave your country your people, your father's household, and go to a land I will show you. This is our journey. You see, we know where Abraham was heading. Abraham was headed to Canaan, the promised land. The place that God had set aside for him. You see, that's our journey. Our journey is going to our promised land, where God has called and designed us to go. But you see, God started with Terah. Abraham's father. And he was set out to go to Canaan. But he stopped short. He stopped in Haran. And he stopped in Haran and lived his life out there. You see, as I was describing that person who lost their backpack, doesn't know where they are to go, God will come to you and Spark your heart, if you allow him to, to move on into the land that he's promised you. Terah did not make it to Canaan. Abraham had a choice to leave and to move on. Now how I'm talking about and why I'm talking about that time in life when you've lost your backpack and things seem stagnant and you, it comes across your heart to, why, why did God make me? When those questions start, I would pray that you would be encouraged because God is opening up doors to take you to your promised land. So as I was reading and I was studying this, the thought 
cross my mind. What does Haran mean? Haran, one, is a man's name, but it's also a place because they lived in Haran. And here's what Haran means. Parched. A dry place. A dry place. So here's Abraham living in a dry place. And God says to him, let me take you to a land that I will show you. It turns out to be Canaan, the promised land that, what, flows with milk and honey. Interesting how Abraham goes from a dry place, steps out into faith, because God says, I'm taking you to a land I will show you. Most of us are like, nope, got to see it. And Abraham's like, okay, let's do this. Let's go ahead. Let's, let's take this step of faith. And he goes from a dry place to a place that is a land that is flowing with milk and honey to where he is, has all of these promises that God has given him. You see, this is God's portrait to Abraham. So when Abraham steps out, he's stepping out on the promises that he's been given. The portrait of how God sees him. To go to a place that is blessing, promises, relationship, purpose. We're all on a journey. You may be sitting in Haran right now. You know, Ian, not a whole lot happening in my life. Things are kind of dry. It's a dry place. Dusty. <laughs> Tumbleweeds. It's not where we want to be. And somewhere down deep inside, we know this is not where we're supposed to be. But how? How do I get to understand that there is a promised land for me. That there is a place that the Lord wants to take me. That is flowing with blessing. That fulfills my purpose. That lets me step into that portrait that he's given me. How? I don't even know where my backpack is, Ian. I don't even know that I had a portrait. When I was in seminary, we had to take classes on preaching. I'm just telling you right now, if I was in class, I would get an F. I'd, I'm not wearing the sport coat, and, and I actually got points taken off because I didn't have the second button buttoned. And I'm not scarred over it, really. <laughs> I'm not. But here's, here's we, and we, we had to critique one another, and we had to evaluate one another, and we had to write these things down, and we had to ask questions, you know? And there was always one question that the Lord told me to, to write down on my own evaluation. And it was a one-word question, it was how. Because it's no point in teaching and sharing all of these different things if we don't know how to do them. So it's can. I was, was not, not convicted, but um, God really grabbed my heart about this. I'm going to pull this portrait out. And as, as I was learning and, and understanding more of this portrait and how it applies to, to what we're going to be on for the next few weeks, <clears throat> the Lord put something on my heart, and I want to share that with you. A lot of us, and at times myself included I don't know what this looks like for me I don't and I believe that it is very very important for us to be able to see us how God sees us 
And there's different ways that that happens and different avenues the Lord takes for that to come about. Um, But God allows us and wants us to understand what this is for each one of us. And I want to offer that if you don't know what this is of you, I want you to contact me. You can send me a note on Facebook. My phone number's out there. You can text me, call me. But to sit down and to work and come alongside of you to understand how God sees you is important to each one of our walks. And God has surrounded me with individuals who can help with all of these things. There are gifts and talents that we all have. And one of those to be able to help people gain understanding of how God sees them is one of the ways that I can help people. And the same with Pastor Phil. So God has people around that can help each one of us see ourselves the way that God sees them. It can be something that's very, very simple. Mary Catherine, can I use you as an example? (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) So we're talking about this inspiration, and Mary Catherine, she looks at me, she goes, so what kind of solo are you doing? And I'm like, "Mm mm-mm, ain't happening. And she goes, you sing so much better than what you know. That is an example of helping me see me the way God sees me. It can be something what we might think is as simple as that. But it is her being able to see me the way God sees me and encouraging me to step into that. You see, it's, it's, it, I just, I love, and you guys know this, but I love being here because we've got teachers, we've got t- people that, that, that's their gift. Is we in, in the world will say, we see your potential. And our teachers do that, hands down, and they're the best at it. But what we're passing along to you is your portrait. It's the way God created you. It's the way God designed you. And you may be sitting at home and going, Ian, I, I never even get off my couch. Call me. If you're living and you're breathing, you have a portrait. You have a purpose. You have gifts and talents. All of what God's given you. To be you so that others see him. Church, this is a super exciting series that we're in. I'm I'm really, really excited about this. This is going to go well beyond the two weeks that we went last summer. But God is literally going to unpack so many things about our lives and how he can free us from things so that we can be on course and stay on course to put him on display. Church, thank you for being you. We have an adventure ahead of us. All of us are on a journey. We're heading to a promised land that each one of us has out of a dry place and into a place flowing with milk and honey. Let's pray. Father, Lord God, we thank you for this day that you've given us. God, we thank you that you have blessed us abundantly. Father, as we move through this series and we get into our backpacks, God, is even next week as we're going to deal with, with some of the things that we have picked up along our journey, Father, I pray that you prepare the hearts. Father, I pray that you prepare the hearts of And the minds, Father, I pray that ears are opened, that eyes are opened, 
to see and understand. Father, I pray that minds are opened. And Father, I pray that you prepare us to let some of these things go. Father, that our loads will be lightened. Father, that purposes and portraits will be seen. God, that you lead us into all that you created us to be. In Jesus' name, amen.